HGG Radio. The Morning Show is sponsored by All Style Construction. For all your general construction needs, commercial and residential cabinet making, visit their website, allstyleconstruction.ca. The time brought to you by All Style Construction is 6 o'clock. This is Higher Ground Gospel Radio, owned and operated by Higher Ground Tabernacle Ministry. We are located at 3601-118 Avenue, Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Streaming live 24-7 at hggradio.ca or download our HGG Radio mobile app from the Google Play Store or Apple Store. Higher Ground Gospel Radio, reaching you at the highest mountain and the lowest valley. Let it fall, let it fall, let it fall on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh this morning on the listeners of HGG Radio, those who are listening near and far. Thank you so much for making it Higher Ground Gospel Radio. You're inside the Hope of Glory morning show. Just about four minutes after six o'clock Mountain Standard Time, four minutes after seven o'clock if you're tuning in from Jamaica. Maker. Four minutes after eight o'clock, if you're listening from the Eastern in the time zone, thank you so much for making it Higher Ground Gospel Radio, HGG Radio. Again, you're inside the Hope of Glory morning show with yours truly, Roshane Douglas, the Christ in me, the Hope of Glory. Good morning to you, Joan Mullings, Andrea Bell Navis, Kathleen Angels, Elsie Knight, Andrea Jones, Rosemary Ryan. Riley, Michelle Bennett, Pam Shirley, Ioni Brown, my friend Patrick Watson, blessings to you, my brother. He's always beside the water. Diane Brown, my friend here in Edmonton. Pat Henry, also in Edmonton. Lilitha Wilby, blessings to you. Lira Chambers, Joycelyn Richards, Eloni Taylor, Janice McIntosh, Chubb Checker, Cynthia Wallen, blessings to you. Mary James, and all those who are tuning in 
Claudette, that's Chosen Claudette, Charlene Edwards. Thank you so much for making it Higher Ground Gospel Radio. And all those tuned in at hggradio.ca, our friends listening on the HGG Radio mobile app. Stay tuned, my friends. Disability Empowerment Foundation, in partnership with Great Commission Foundation, presents Disability Awareness Musical Concert under the theme The Gifted and the Lifted at the Redeemed Christian Church of God, RCCG Champions Parish, 18811 111 Avenue, Edmonton, on Saturday, April 6, 2024, from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Admission free. That's the Disability, Disability Awareness, Awareness Musical Concert, Concert April 6, 2024. See you there. Praise the Lord and God bless you. Pastor Rod Charles here from Bethel Apostolic Stony Plain. We want to welcome you to revival that is happening in the house. March 23rd and 24th, Rise Up Revival is coming to the house of Bethel and you have to be there. There's going to be worship. Amen. There is going to be deliverance. And most of all, we're going to hear a word from Elder J.G. Williams. And if you want to be a part of that renewal and refreshing, you have to be here. Remember, March 23rd and 24th, you have to be in the house so that the Lord can bless you. God bless you. Make sure that you're here. Bring your outreach and evangelistic teams and register online at www.bacsp.ca. God bless you, and I love you. This will be at 501251 Avenue, Stony Plain, Alberta. For more information, visit their website at www.bacsp.ca. That's the Rise Up Revival Conference. I tell you, you have to rise up in the season. The Word of God says in the book of Isaiah chapter 60, it says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. All roads lead to Bethel Stony Plain for their Rise Up Conference. It's going to be March 23 and March 24. And that's over there at 50, that's 501 to 51 Avenue. Stony Plain, Alberta. Of course, you can visit their website, BASBACSP.ca, for more information. That's BACSP.ca. You can get more information about this great evangelism conference. It's equipping you for the future. Powerful sessions will be in place at this great conference. Rise up. The revival equips for the future. Again, let me say good morning to my friends who have just joined us. Welcome. Remember to like, share, comment, subscribe. Tell somebody to tell somebody about Higher Ground Gospel Radio and what we're doing on this side of the vineyard. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, HGTM and HGG Radio. Do so today. Invite a friend. Tell a family member. Put it on your status. Tell them to subscribe. Tell them to listen to these uh, watch these videos, I should say, rather, and uh, let them be a blessing, not just to you, but to others, all right? <laughs> Approaching nine minutes after six o'clock, we're going to pray in just a little while. Let me say good morning to you, Angela Hackett, Nicole Myers, blessings to you, Emily Douglas Howard, blessings to you, Emily. Thank you so much for coming on. My friend, Teresa Jones, blessings to you. So all those who are new, if you're on for the first time, let me say a special welcome to you. If it's your first time tuning into HGG Radio, if it's your first time tuning into the Hope of Glory Morning Show, if it's your first time seeing me, you can just type a message, it's my first time. I, I like when, you know, I meet people for the first time. There's always something great about the first. Let me not go into the details, but the Bible says, remember your first love. Where it all started at that initial stage. You remember when it was without form and void? And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved or hovered over the face of the waters. And the Lord said, let there be light. And there was light. The Bible says, in the beginning. The beginning is always important. So it's always good to know that persons are tuning in for the first time. And we continue to grow as a family here 
on HGG Radio. Just about 10 minutes after 6 o'clock, it is now time for us to pray. And then we're going to move straight into this morning's devotional. And I hope that this morning's devotional will be a blessing to you. Stay tuned. Father, we thank you this morning for your word, which is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We pray, God, that you'll minister to this word in a powerful way. God, sanctify us this morning by your fire, by your grace, by your power. Let your name be glorified as we lift you up, we exalt you. We place you on high. In Jesus' name we pray. And the listeners of HGG Radio, we say thank God for healing, deliverance, and breakthrough god is up to something he's doing a mighty work he's doing a mighty work this morning and i really want you to stay tuned for what god is about to do i want to play this song and then we're going to go straight into our devotional stay tuned my friends hgg radio i love worship say when you touch me with your fire love me with your fire alarm. Say when you touch me with your fire alarm. Oh, when you touch me with your fire alarm. Say my sins were higher than a mountain. And the Lord sanctified me. My sins were flowing like a river. And the Lord sanctified me. Oh, singing glory Your fire from me tongue, your fire in my speech, fire heart, fire soul, burn fire me a preach, boy, singing glory, hallelujah, when the fire came. When the fire came, when the fire came, singing glory. We're speaking about the Holy Ghost fire. We're speaking about the consuming fire. Can you feel the fire this morning? I want you to type fire. Fire of the Holy Ghost. There's something about the fire this morning. It's all about God's fire this morning. This morning's devotional theme, fire for the kingdom assignment. Fire for the kingdom assignment. We're speaking about the Holy Ghost fire this morning. Now, I, I started thinking about this morning's devotional. I, I've actually, the Lord dropped this song in my spirit. And I started to think about the times in the Bible where we, we heard about fire coming in the Bible. And I remember, I believe it was Genesis chapter 19, I believe, verse 24. Let me see if that's the scripture that came across. Let me see if that's that scripture. I'm trying to remember. 
Genesis chapter 19, verse 24. I believe that's the first scripture that came to mind this morning. So Genesis chapter 19, verse 24, And then the Lord rained down burning sulfur on Sodom on and Gomorrah from the Lord out of heavens, out of the heavens. So we read that, um, let me see what the King James says. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And, you know, a lot of us get um, get um, a very, very, uh, what's the word? I'm looking for a word this morning. It's not the word fearful, but it keeps us in line when we are reminded that our God is a consuming fire. Now, his fire brings sanctification. His fire brings purification. There comes a time in our lives that there needs to be some type of fire for you to keep in line, for you to not harbor certain uh, behavioral patterns in your life because the fire keeps you in line. So this morning we're speaking about fire for the kingdom assignment. God has given you an assignment. Now the fire comes before the assignment. The fire comes during the assignment. Let me give you an example. Now, the Lord appeared to Moses in a burning bush. The Lord appeared to Moses in a burning bush, I believe, in the book of Exodus. So we know Moses' his story. He, he, he was brought up in the palace of Pharaoh as a prince for 40 years. He fled to Midian for another 40 years where he got married. He was a shepherd. He was working for, I believe, Jethro. And you know the story of Moses. But after working in Midian, the Lord came to him in the form of a burning bush. But when he was looking at the bushes, the bushes weren't consumed. The fire was there, but the bush was not consumed. Now, the Lord appeared to Moses during that time in the form of a burning bush. And he gave him a, an assignment to go to Pharaoh and to tell Pharaoh. So Moses needed to open up his mouth. He needed to say something to Pharaoh. And his response was that, you know, God, I can't speak. Um, I have stuttering lips. In other words, Moses was saying to God, I'm stammer. So God said, you know what? I have given you this assignment. I have appeared to you in this form. I said, take off your sandals, take off your shoes. The place where you're standing is holy ground. So God appeared to Moses just before the assignment in the form of fire, a consuming fire. So when God appeared to Moses, he sent him to Pharaoh and he gave the excuse of, you know, not having the ability to speak. So God said, okay, I'm going to send you a helper in the form of your brother Aaron, who is a very excellent speaker. So there are times when we see here when the fire of God comes into your life, then you should begin to speak. We see another example in the book of Acts chapter 2. Let's go there. Acts chapter Two, let me see um, if I can pull that up for you. And we're speaking about the day of Pentecost. And this is what the Bible says. Let me see if I can find the version which a lot of us are accustomed to. Let me see if I can pull that up for you. And it says in verse 2, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. It's the same thing when God appeared to Moses. He appeared to Moses at a certain place and he appeared in the form of a burning bush. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them cloven tongues like as of fire. So here we see where the fire comes again. And it sat upon each of them, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance or as the Spirit gave them the language. 
So it's similar here when God appeared to Moses for at the beginning of the assignment. He appeared to him in the form of a burning bush and God gave him an instruction to speak. But Moses basically declined the offer to say, God, you're the one who created me and I have this challenge in my speaking. So God said, you know, I'm not going to allow you not opening, opening up your mouth. I'm not going to allow your, um, I don't want to call it a disability. I don't want to allow your shortcoming to stop my assignment from coming to pass. Because there was a prophecy. I believe the Lord spoke to Abraham and he said that your offsprings, they're going to be in Egypt for this amount of time. I believe it was 430 years. So prophecy had to be fulfilled. There's a prophecy over your life and it has to be fulfilled. And God is sending some fire into your life. And sometimes when you think about fire, you think about those fiery situations that you're going through at the moment. I don't know what type of situations you're going through, but it allows you to achieve or accomplish the assignment that God has given you. There are times when we get distracted. There are times when our mind is in a different place. Our priorities shift and goes into a different direction. But there comes a time when God will bring some fiery tests, some fiery trials to align us or get us back into alignment for the assignment that he has given us. So God is aligning someone who is listening this morning. So here we see where God appeared to Moses at the beginning of his assignment. God appeared to the apostles at the beginning of their assignment in the form of fire. And the fire, when they received the fire, they began to speak. I remember it was Elijah who was on Mount Carmel, I believe. And you know the story where the prophets of Baal, they were calling on Baal and no Baal. And, you know, they rang so many times, you know, and, you know, there was an, you know, if it's nowadays time, you know, they would have taken up the phone and they called Baal, no answer, straight to voicemail. And they keep calling on their God and no answer. Their God is not answering them. And I know Elijah was mocking the prophets of Baal. And we know the story where the fire came and consumed the sacrifice. It licked up the trenches. So we know our God also to be a consuming fire. There are times when you'll go through some fiery situations in your life, but the fire will not consume you. What the fire consumes in your life is the impurities. The fire only comes in your life to purify you. The fire only comes in your life to refine you. Let me give you an example of what the Bible says. One of my favorite scriptures found here in Isaiah chapter 48 and I believe verse 10. And this is what it says. Behold, I have refined thee but not as silver, or not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. That's the King James Version. Let's read the NIV version and hear what it says. We're speaking about the fire that aligns us to our assignment. So it says, see, I have refined you, not as silver. It says, I have tested you in the furnace of affliction. So there are times when we'll go through some tests. There are times when we will go through the furnace of affliction, but this affliction is to refine you. This affliction is to get you in line with what God wants you to do or the person God wants you to be. So I really want us to be ready in the season to complete our kingdom assignment. I want you to ask God this morning, what is my assignment? What are you calling me to do in this season? There are times when we try this, it doesn't work. There are times when we go into this direction, the door is shut in our face, but God is leading you in a different direction. 
There are times when you're on the job and you know in your heart that this job is not for me. And you keep holding on to this job. You keep holding on to it because, of course, it provides bread on your table and so on and so forth. But God will allow some things on the job for you to go through a fiery situation in order for you to go out and to open your business or to apply to somewhere else or to shift your focus to the place where God wants it to be. There are times when God will allow some situations to happen at a certain location because he wants you to shift from that location because there's an assignment that he wants you to do in another location. So he will allow the fire to come into that place so that you can move out of that place and go to the place where he wants you to be. I really hope somebody's getting it this morning. I don't know what fiery trial. I remember it was on Monday, I believe Monday or Tuesday. Yesterday, I wasn't in yesterday. Of course, it was a repeat broadcast. You would have listened yesterday. Thank you so much for tuning in, even though it was a rebroadcast yesterday morning. Yesterday morning, of course, I had an emergency. And, you know, I'm just letting you know, just being transparent to the listeners. You know, I had to not rush my son, but my son was complaining about his ankle yesterday morning at about two o'clock in the morning so i said you know what i can't wait until a doctor opens up or anything like that so i had to take him to the hospital in the morning about three in the morning but i thought that because it's so early in the morning i would have gone to the hospital they would have extrayed his ankle and i and i thought that i would have made it on time to be here in studio but unfortunately i went there at three in the morning and i got through a little bit after 10 o'clock in the morning. So I spent seven hours in the hospital. So what happened to my son is that he was playing. Kids normally play and they do play and they play and they play. So while he was playing after school, he twisted his ankle in his shoes. Um, thank God it's not broken or anything. It's just a little sprain. So of course, thanks be to God and I'm here today. But there are times in our lives that we go through fiery trials things just happen you know you're being pressured by the bank to pay a loan you can't clear your credit card bills there are a lot of things which are happening because of the decisions that we make there are times when god allows us to make certain decisions or he gives us the free will to make certain decisions he will show us which road to take but there are times when we have our own agenda and when God wants us to do his will, he's not going to force his will on you. But God will allow some fiery trials, some situations to come in your life for you to get back in line which, with what he wants you to do in the first place. There are times when we think that God needs help. I remember, you know, I was at home one, one time in my life. And of course, you guys would have known, I share my testimony. I, w I was supposed to work at this place, didn't work out, so I was unemployed maybe for about four months. But I remember during my time of um, unemployment, one of my friends reached out to me and she said to me that, you know, there is a position that is opening up at her workplace. So she wanted me to go ahead and send in my resume. And, you know, it's a very strange occurrence. Normally, whenever I'm thinking about sending a resume, I have to go in and make some um, changes to my resume. So I said to her, I have to edit my resume and then I'll send it to her in the morning. So I remember going to my bed that night and I, when I went to my bed, the Lord appeared to me in a dream and he reminded me of the story of Sarah and I believe um, Abraham. Was well, yeah, Sarah and Abraham. You know the story when Sarah wanted to help God to get that promised seed because she believed that she wasn't going to get pregnant and she told Abraham to go in and sleep with Agar which was her bond servant and he went in and he slept with Agar and we know the story about Ishmael and the promised seed was Isaac who came from Sarah but what Sarah was doing at the time she was trying to help God and I heard the Lord said to me that you know I should um I shouldn't I, he said son I don't need your help I was trying to you know 
apply for a job, doing all of these things. I'm not telling you not to apply for a job. I'm not telling you not to send your resume. But based on where God was shaping me in that time, I was going through a season where God was, um, you know, directing me in a certain direction. But during that season, I remember that night, you know, the Lord said, don't, I don't need your help. And he said to me, don't send in your resume. So I called the young lady the following morning and I told her she's a praying lady. And I said, you know, God said I shouldn't send a resume. He said to me last night, he doesn't need my help. God would have allowed me to get a job later on down the road where I didn't apply for this job and I found myself working at a certain workplace and I did not send in my resume directly to them. God just opened up an avenue for me to get that job without me even applying for the job. That's how God works. So what am I saying to us in this season? The fire of God will come into your life. There are some testing situations that you will face. And these situations, are, they don't come to bring you down. They come to elevate you. There are times when you're faced with some scenarios and it, and it begins to be like a test. I remember recent times, there are a couple scenarios I've seen in my life where I said to myself, you know what, God, this is a test. And I don't want to fail this test. So I had to um, humble myself to a certain degree and just do what the God wanted me to do in that moment. And I want us to think about some situations that we're facing. Don't allow pride to rob you of what God wants to do in your life. God is saying to us this morning as we're speaking about the fire for the kingdom assignment, God will allow some situations to come in your life, but he wants you to get rid of pride. The reason why the fire comes into your life, it wants to purify you. It wants to bring you to a place of humility. And that is why the Bible says God rejects the proud. God says, you know, I believe the Bible says six things the Lord hates, seven are an abomination. And the first thing he said, you know, the Lord hates a proud look, a proud look, just the look of pride. God hates it. Just the look of pride in your life, God hates it. So the fire comes to get rid of that pride, get rid of that arrogancy, get rid of that knowing, knowing it all attitude. Sometimes even when you know something, you just have to humble yourself. Even when you know that you're the most educated person in the room, you still have to just humble yourself and learn from even the very little one in the room who has less knowledge than you. There are times and because we're at a certain place, we believe that we are higher than everybody. You know, uh, something was said to me some time ago um, from a certain um, leader. And the person says, you know, I'm the pastor at the church. So I'm the most anointed person, <laughs> you know, and I'm saying to myself, okay, this is a very bold statement, very interesting statement. Not because you're the one who is pastoring a church. It doesn't mean that you're the most anointed person at that church. You know, there are some statements that we make. We have to be careful of the things that we say and how we say it. It will come across as a sign of arrogance. It doesn't matter how anointed you are. It doesn't matter how God uses you mightily. It doesn't matter if even your shadow heals people you still have to remain at that place of humility. Even very, um, I believe it was Paul who wrote the epistles and the letters and so on. He said that there was a thorn in his flesh. God was using this man mightily, but yet still there was a thorn in his flesh. Yet still he had a problem that he had to deal with. So this thorn became like a fire. It, 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 it did not leave him. So there are some things that God will allow to be in your life to keep you in line. He doesn't want you to get off track. He doesn't want you to get off the road. He wants you to stay on the road. He wants you to keep your eyes on the prize. There are times when we look to the left, look to the right, but God wants you to look forward. He wants you to keep your eyes on the prize. He wants you to press towards the mark of the high calling, which is in Jesus Christ. God wants you to fix your mind on him. Don't get distracted. Don't get confused.
God is up to something in this season. God is up to something in this season, my friends. I really want us to get ready in this season to allow the fire of God to come in our lives. There's a fire that God wants to bring to our lives. He wants to transform us. He wants to mold us. He wants to fashion us. He wants us to be the people that he has called us to be. You don't have to be like somebody else. You don't have to try to emulate somebody else. Just be you for you. The Holy Spirit is unique to you. The Holy Spirit will use you. Your ability is needed in the kingdom of God. Your assignment is as equally important as another person's assignment. I really want us to stay true to what God has called you to do. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for the assignment that you have given each and every one of us. God, we pray that your kingdom agenda will be established on this earth. God, your word says, let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you, divine God, that even in this season, God, we will stay in line. You'll keep us in line to accomplish your assignment on this earth. Help us not to get distracted. Help us not to have our own agendas. But God, whatever we're doing in this season, help us to recognize that you're the one that is leading us. You're the one that is directing us. And in everything that we do, we pray, God, that you'll get the glory. Your people will be edified. And, of course, your name will be glorified. Thank you, God, for showing up for the listeners of HGG Radio. Those who are watching, those who are listening, let your anointing flow in their lives. Destroy yokes. Set them free. Sanctify us in this season. Purify us, God. Set us apart for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And the listeners of HGG Radio, we say amen and amen. The closer you draw to the Lord, the more you'll feel is fire. The closer you draw to him, the heat will purify some things in your life. So don't stray away from God because you're feeling the heat. The closer you go, <laughs> you know, you ever thought about it? There are times you're going through life and your life is just smooth sailing. Everything is just smooth. The road is not rocky. There's no speed bumps. There's no potholes. You're just cruising. Have you ever driven a car and you put it in cruise control and you don't have to be pressing the gas or the brake? You just, you just cruise. There's no traffic in front of you. You're on an open road and you're just cruising. But whenever you decide that you want to draw closer to God, then you begin to start experiencing some turbulent situations in your life. Don't, 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 don't. Don't get distracted. Don't allow the turbulent situations to stop you from getting closer to your God. Have you ever traveled on a plane and the plane is going to a certain destination? The pilot doesn't tell you that, you know what, there's turbulence ahead. We're going to have to turn back. The pilot tells you to buckle your seatbelts. We're going through the turbulence. I don't know who you are this morning, but don't allow that turbulent situation to tell you that you need to turn back. You have to go through it. David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you have to go through it. But God says he's going to be with you even in your fire. You remember those three Hebrew boys? They were thrown in the fire and they, get, they got promoted in a Babylonian society. They went in the fire and they were not burned. God did not consume them. Even the men that threw them in the fire because the fire was even seven times hotter than usual. Even the men at the front of that furnace, those men died. But when they threw those three Hebrew boys in the fire, they went in the fire and they came out purified and God was glorified. Let God be glorified this morning. Thank you for listening. Stay tuned. Calgary. 
join us on April 5, 2024 for an evening of praise and worship presented by MR Productions featuring Petra K from Jamaica. Oh, I cross Michael Reed from Edmonton. I know I'm blessed. Rex Uche, Inheritance Group, and Showers of Blessings Praise Team live in concert. Doors open at 6.30 p.m. Showtime, 7 p.m. at the Southeast Hope Assembly, 520 60th Avenue, Southeast Calgary. Adults pre-sold $35, $40 at the door. Kids, $15 at the door. Get your tickets at eventbrite.ca or call 780-284-3450. That's Come Worship the King, Calgary. See you there. All right, so we're getting ready to go into a brand new book this morning, the book of Jeremiah. Yes, my friends, they call him the weeping prophet, the man who loves to cry. I believe at some point, you know, remember, you know, Jeremiah said, you know, he wanted to keep the word of God within him. He didn't want to deliver the word of God anymore because every time Jeremiah prophesied at the time, it was like he was prophesying doom and gloom. Son. And I believe at some point Jeremiah said, you know, God, you know, I, I don't want to speak your word anymore. I don't want to go to the kings and say you need to repent or you need to do this and you need to do that. You know, our destruction is going to come. The Babylonians are going to take over. And I believe at some point Jeremiah said, you know, God, I'm not going to share your word anymore. I'm not going to prophesy anymore. And I felt uh, there was a scripture that Jeremiah said, I feel like the fire shot up in my bones and we're speaking about this same man this morning, Jeremiah. So we're going to go into the book of Jeremiah. We're going to be just looking at Jeremiah chapter 1 this morning. So I really want us to stay tuned. I really want us to stay tuned and continue to listen to HGG Radio as we go over to our friends over there at Faith Comes by Hearing. I really wanted to stay tuned as we listen to Jeremiah chapter 1. I want you to listen, listen, and be blessed. To speak Jeremiah. to the nations for me. Jeremiah chapter 1. My name is Jeremiah. I am a priest, and my father Hilkiah and everyone else in my family are from Anathoth in the territory of the Benjamin tribe. This book contains the things that the Lord told me to say. The Lord first spoke to me in the 13th year that Josiah was king of Judah, and he continued to speak to me during the rule of Josiah's son, Jehoiakim. The last time the Lord spoke to me was in the fifth month of the eleventh year that Josiah's son Zedekiah was king. That was also when the people of Jerusalem were taken away as prisoners. The Lord said, Jeremiah, I am your creator, and before you were born I chose you to speak for me to the nations. I replied, I'm not a good speaker, Lord, and I'm too young. Don't say you're too young. The Lord answered, If I tell you to go and speak to someone, then go. And when I tell you what to say, don't leave out a word. I promise to be with you and keep you safe, so don't be afraid. The Lord reached out his hand, then he touched my mouth and said, I am giving you the words to say, and I am sending you with authority to speak to the nations for me. You will tell them of doom and destruction, and of rising and rebuilding again. The Lord showed me something in a vision. Then he asked, What do you see, Jeremiah? I answered, A branch of almonds that ripen early. That's right, the Lord replied. And I always rise early to keep a promise. Then the Lord showed me something else and asked, What do you see now? I answered, I see a pot of boiling water in the north, and it's about to spill out towards us. The Lord said, I will pour out destruction all over the land. Just watch while I send for the kings of the north. They will attack and capture Jerusalem and other towns, then set up their thrones at the gates of Jerusalem. I will punish my people because they are guilty of turning from me to worship idols. Jeremiah, get ready. Go and tell the people what I command you to say. Don't be frightened by them, or I will make you terrified while they watch. My power will make you strong, like a fortress or a column of iron or a wall of bronze. You will oppose all of Judah, including its kings and leaders, its priests and people. 
They will fight back, but they won't win. I, the Lord, give my word. I won't let them harm you. This is the word of the Lord. We honor by saying thanks be to God. Stay tuned, my friends. This is HGG Radio. Are you ready to amplify your message and reach hearts with purpose? Introducing HGG Advertising, your partner in spreading the gospel and connecting with the Christian community. Churches, Christian-based businesses, listen up. With HGG Advertising, you can reach your audience through powerful radio campaigns. Engage hearts, inspire minds, and grow your community with HGG Radio, which is already reaching 136 countries worldwide. We specialize in promoting Christian values and helping businesses aligned with faith-based principles. Whether it's a church event or your business rooted in Christian values, HGG Advertising is here for you. Connect with us and let's share your message with purpose. HGG Advertising, spreading the gospel connecting communities email us today at ads at hggradio.ca that's ads at hggradio.ca or call us today at 825-343-4486 Minister Renee in collaboration with Total Well Women's Community presents a women's virtual conference and birthday prayer retreat under the theme She Was Never Alone April 25th through 27th. Come join our intercessors for prayer at 4.30 a.m. and 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. Here presenters Minister Olive Grant out of Jamaica and Minister Donna Scott out of New York, 7.30 p.m. nightly. It's going to be an amazing, amazing event. Get your tickets early on spuropen.com at Totally Well Women's Community Women's Virtual Conference. Listen, save the date. Don't be late. Hello there, See you HGG now. Radio listeners and viewers on YouTube. We here at HGG Radio want to hear from you. Yes, you. Please send us a 30-second voice note or video on WhatsApp telling us your name, the country you're listening or watching from, the church you attend, and most importantly, why you choose to listen to and watch HGG Radio. Please send your voice notes and videos to our WhatsApp number at 825-343-7778. That's 825-343-7778. We know you have options and are happy you choose to join us daily right here on HGG Radio. Your testimonials might make it on air. We look forward to hearing from you, our valued listeners and viewers. Lord, make me a house. Make me a house of prayer. Son of Eddie James on this one, house of prayer. We're speaking about the fire for the kingdom assignment. You're tuned to Higher Ground Gospel Radio. Stay tuned, my friends. Make me a house, make me a house of prayer. Lord, make me a house, make me a house of prayer, a house of prayer. Lord, make me a house. Fire on my altar, never burn out. Fire on my altar, never burn out. 
Seek your face, seek your face, oh Lord. Make me a house, make me a house of prayer, a house of prayer. May the fire of my altar never burn out. The fire of my altar never burn out. May the fire of my altar never burn out. Make me a house of prayer. The fire of my altar never burn up. The fire of my altar never burn up. May the fire of my altar never burn up. Make me a house of prayer. of prayer. Baby. You're tuned to Higher Ground Gospel Radio. It's a retro Thursday. Gonna be t- playing some songs for you yeah. off Facebook and of course off YouTube. Yeah. I want you to come on over to hggradio.ca as we stay tuned for the Hope of Glory morning show. Yeah. It's all about God's fire this morning. It's all about His Holy Ghost fire. May the fire 